Hello everyone, and welcome to another game legend. This is about a creepypasta called Sonic the Hedgehog. As a child, I really loved playing the Sonic the Hedgehog games on the Sega Mega Drive. Sadly, when nostalgia hit me one evening, I found our console broke, broken when we moved into our new house, meaning my mom threw out all my old games. So I decided to search eBay for a pre-owned Mega Drive. I stumbled across one at the rather cheap price of six pounds, including delivery. Uh, six pounds, I think, is about ten dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong. The description claimed it also came with Sonic One. Yet, upon closer inspection, the cartridge's paper seemed to have been torn off, with the label looked crudely placed on the front, written in scrawled script. I thought nothing of it and decided to bid on it. Weirdly, despite it having a day to go, I immediately won the item. I proceeded to my payment, left my feedback, and arrived within three days. The Mega Drive was in surprisingly good condition for the price. Almost brand new, with uh, some smudged fingerprints. Glue into the labeled cartridge, old habits die hard, you see, and inserted it into the cartridge slot. The TV screen flickered on. The familiar image of the Sega logo faded in left to right. Instead of the joyous chorus, there was a catanonic blast of static, which lasted for longer than it should have. This is where it got weirder. The title screen was polluted, black sludge pouring into the seas, with dark skies and lightning. The music was slower, and a distant minor key, Sonic popped up out of the marquee. He genuinely looked terrified and afraid. I thought this must be... I thought this must have been some sort of hack until I hit start. I saw Robotnik in graphics far more realistic than possible for the time, holding a lifelike rabbit by the ears. He looked full of malice and hatred, with his Prince Nez glasses glinting as he revealed in his other hand a machete. Held it up to the jet to the defenseless animal's throat and slid it, blood f pouring out like a fountain. Botnik began to laugh, which was almost like he was in the room with me. It was so realistic. The game then went to Green Hill Zone, and the music was replaced with a low buzzing drone. The background looked just like it did. Um just like it did on the title screen, and again, Sonic looked visibly shaken. His skin was paler, and he appeared to shake with fear. On running, he began to cry. Nevertheless, I decided to play through the game as normal, just to see if this was some sort of cruel joke. I ended up losing rings against a buzz bomber. The noise on losing my rings was a harsh ringing, and I heard Robotnik's chortle once more, his face flashing in a stormy background. Sonic hit the floor. I was unable to, unable to control him at this point, as the Buzz Bomber began to descend on Sonic's helpless body. The Buzz Bomber literally stabbed Sonic, and all I could hear were tortured screams. I couldn't take my eyes off the crudely animated sprites of Sonic wreathing in pain as the Buzz Bomber rammed into him. This went on for a good 30 seconds before the Buzz Bomber flew off, leaving a bloody corpse of Sonic behind. The screen subsided as the screen faded to black. I heard incredibly deep murmuring in some sort of weird language, maybe Japanese or Korean. Again, the hyper-realistic Dr. Robotnik faded into view again, but this time he was holding up an even more realistic Sonic by the head. Sonic was crying, begging for mercy, sheer terror in his eyes, but this time Robotnik didn't have a knife. He literally broke Sonic's neck, sound reverberating, and I was treated to the sight of Robotnik kicking the defenseless corpse of the hedgehog around, blood flying everywhere, Sonic's spines breaking off. All the time, the distorted sounds of Dr. Robotnik's laughter and Sonic's screams playing. A message appeared in Japanese with a selection, yes or no. I chose yes, somehow driven to continue. I appeared back in Green Hill Zone, but this time, there were graves where the totem poles were. Sonic was even more afraid, looking directly at the screen as it begging me not to continue, but I felt I had to. I continued through the game, of which the layout hadn't changed at all. The iconic loop loop was there, the tunnel Sonic span down, everything was the same, but decayed and full of pollution. I reached the end of the level, however, and was um, and it was the iconic boss level, you know, with the wrecking ball. Only when Dr. Botnik appeared, there was a blast of cacophonous synth sound. Robotic's face was contorted with sheer disgust for the hedgehog. Before I even had a chance to attack, Robotnik's wrecking ball slammed into Sonic and crushed him against the side of the screen. Once more the screen was played, 
the screen began to glitch horrifically and turn gray, almost in television static. Before I had the chance to hit the power button and take out the cartridge, I heard very clearly in a deep voice, this was your fault, and your fault alone. I looked at the television screen, and the hyper-realistic robotic space uh, from before occupied the entire screen. The words game over flashed over his face, and I saw, it, saw Sonic's hyper-realistic uh, carcass fall and land on top of the letter sliding and hitting the floor. All you could hear was Sonic's whimpering and crying and asking, Why did you do this? Why? I promptly ripped the game out of my console, threw them both straight in the garbage. To this day, I have never seen the eBay seller online again. My computer returned 404s on searching history, and if anyone asked, I, anyone I asked on the eBay forums claimed the user never existed in the first place. Well, that was a fairly good creepypasta. Um, there were some cliches, such as the um, eBay seller he gets it, he gets it right when the when you know the when he bids on it. Uh, cheap price. Um, I decided to read this one word for word since it was pretty short, so, but I did, um, change all, because he's, uh, from the UK, I decided to change all the words to their American counterparts. So, other cliches, you have the guy, the eBay seller, disappearing as soon as he tries to look for him, the web page not ever being brought up again, and people never remembering him, and stuff like that. Um, him, him continuing when this was clearly something, but, you know, I can forgive that. No one thinks that video games will be anything, any problem. Like, if I ha if I bought a hacked game and I just found out it was hacked, I'd probably keep going. So, I can forgive that. So, um, yeah, it's the, no the nostalgia that's been overused, but these are all things you can overlook just because they don't break it at all. Uh, there wasn't an excessive amount of blood and gore. It's only contained in the game, which is good, because it completely... Uh, I shouldn't say all the time, but it usually breaks the creepypasta completely if something actually kills the player. But... Um, just because it just breaks out the... It breaks the realism. Uh, the hyper-realistic blood, that gets annoying. Or the, not the hyper-realistic. Uh, it doesn't have to be blood, but it's also the Dr. Robotnik. Just the word hyper-realistic, it's so overused, and what does it mean? Realistic of beyond realistic? Like fourth dimension realistic? Hmm, something to think about. But, um, yes. So, but, it wasn't a terrible creepypasta, it was pretty good. Uh, it uses a lot of imagery, so you can actually picture it. And, uh, I think if I had to rate it, I'd give it a 7 out of 10 was not bad at all. I recommend that you read it, just to see for yourself. I did read it word for word, so you don't have to worry about it, if you don't want to. So, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and leave a comment. Tell me what you'd rate this creepypasta, and what do you think the author could have done better. So, thanks for watching. And remember, it's just a legend. Right? Okay,